Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV. I'm Naomi Gigon, bringing you English News Roundup. Prince Philip, the irascible and tough-minded husband of Queen Elizabeth II, who spent more than seven decades supporting his wife in a role that both defined and constricted his life, has died, Buckingham Palace said on Friday. He was 99. His life spent nearly a century of European history, starting with his birth as a member of the Greek royal family and ending as Britain's longest-serving consort during a turbulent reign in which the thousand-year-old monarch was forced to reinvent itself for the 21st century. He was known for his occasionally racist and sexist remarks and for gamely fulfilling more than 20,000 royal engagements to boost British interests at home and abroad. He headed hundreds of charities, founded programs that helped British school children participate in challenging outdoor adventures, and played a prominent part in raising his four children, including his eldest son, Prince Charles, the heir to the throne. Philip spent a month in hospital earlier this year before being released on March 16 to return to Windsor Castle. President Joe Biden on Thursday branded U.S. gun violence an epidemic and an international embarrassment at a White House ceremony to unveil his first attempt at getting the problem under control. This is an epidemic and it has to stop, he said, calling shootings a public health crisis. It's an international embarrassment the Democrat flanked by Attorney General Merrick Carlin and Vice President Kamala Harris dull Congress members and gun control activists in the Rose Garden. Biden said it is time for some action. Several hours after Biden's announcement, a gunman opened fire at the Texas Gabinetary Plan, where he was employed, killing one person and sending four others to the hospital in critical condition. No motivation was immediately known. With Congress unable to agree on broad new gun regulations like stricter background checks for gun buyers, Biden announced six executive measures which he said would help them down the crisis. Republicans immediately attacked the proposal with the party's senior leader in the House of Representatives, Gavin McCarthy, warning of unconstitutional overreach. In addition to relatively modest moves on the political, politically hyper-sensitive issue, Biden used his Ross Carden speech to announce the nomination of David Chipman, a gun control proponent and former law enforcement officer, as head of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. Biden's six measures included a proposed rule to stop proliferation of coast guns as firearms spill from home kits are known. The White House says these homemade weapons are especially of concern because they have no serial numbers and cannot be traced after being used in crimes. Another proposed rule will be tightening regulations on arm presses designed to stabilize pistols, a device used by the man who killed 10 people in a Colorado grocery store last month. Under the rule, pistols with prices would be classified as short-barreled rifles, putting them under stricter control. Other measures include boosting support for agencies involved in tackling community violence and ordering the first comprehensive report on firearms trafficking in the United States since 2000. <coughs> Nearly 40 Americans die each year from shootings. Speaking at a party conference, Mr. Kim appeared to compare the situation to an infamous deadly famine in the 1990s. North Korea has shut its borders due to the coronavirus pandemic. It has brought trade with China, its economic lifeline, to a standstill. Also on top of existing international economic sanctions over Pyongyang's nuclear program. In a rare admission of looming hardship, the authoritarian leader on Thursday called on party officials to wait another more difficult, arduous march in order to relieve our people of the difficulty even a little. The arduous march is a term used by the North Korea officials to refer to the country's struggle during a devastating famine in the 1990s when the fall of the Soviet Union left North Korea without crucial aid. Around 3 million people are estimated to have died during that period. Earlier this week, Kim had warned the country faced the worst ever situation and unprecedentedly numerous challenges. The Narcotics Control Bureau on Thursday brought Danish Chigna and eight of fugitives under world dawn, Dawood Ibrahim, to Mumbai from Rajasthan, where he was snapped in connection with drug cases, an official said. Danish Chigna, a Danish merchant, was wanted in connection with two cases, including the operations of a drug factory in Mumbai, he said. Danish is part of the Chinko Patan model and had fled to Rajasthan, the official said. He used to operate a drug factory linked to Dawood at Dongri in South Mumbai, he said. Danish was on the run since the NCB busted the drugs model being operated from Dongri, he said. 
Early this week, he was apprehended at Kota in Rajasthan with the assistance of the local police, the official said. The NCB took his transit remand from a court and brought him to Mumbai, he said. Though India has the first mover advantage in vaccination, the pace is not enough and at this rate, it would take years to vaccinate 75% of the population, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi wrote in a letter addressed to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Meeting a seven-point demands, the Congress leader said the government must place an immediate moratorium on vaccine exports and open vaccination to everyone who needs it. The other demands of the Congress leader include providing vaccine suppliers with necessary resources to increase manufacturing capacity, fast-tracking the approval process of other vaccines as per norms and guidelines, increasing the allocation of rupees 35,000 crore to vaccines procurements as announced in Union Budget 2021 to double allowing states a greater say in vaccine procurement and distribution, providing direct income support to the vulnerable sections. Was the export of vaccines also an oversight, the Congress leader asked in his letter, referring to the recent order issued by the finance minister on interest rate caught on small savings. The order was withdrawn a day after a finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman, said it was an oversight. Questioning why state governments have not been given the authority to procure vaccines according to their need, the Congress leader wrote, even though public health is a state subject, our states have been bypassed right from vaccine procurements to registration. Two days after arrested Mumbai Police Assistant Inspector Sachin Vaze accused Maharashtra Minister Anil Bharab of asking him to, uh, to collect rupees 2 crore. Another later dated March 19 has emerged against the tainted officer. The letter dogs of Sachin was settling the issue with contractors in the recent BMC e tendering scheme. The letter was sent by a person named John Michael D. Costa to BMC Commissioner Iqbal Jahal and Commissioner of Police Heman Nagrili. The complainant has demanded that the probe be initiated into the Rubies 5 crore e tendering scheme in the BMC and claimed that the Sajin was who was investigating the racket has settled the matter. The letter was sent six days after Sajin was arrested on March 13 in the Andalia bomb scare gas being probed by the NIA. It is yet to be known if Sajin was was referring to this letter when he named Maharashtra Minister Anil Barab. In February, there were complaints about the hacking of bids by a guard of contractors who allegedly managed to breach the BMC's online tendering system. The racket managed to check the bids and then got lower bids to pay contracts worth hundreds of crore. It was alleged that the section of contractors got access to the valid balance and rates coded by other contractors at the same time of submission of online bids to BMC. South Korea unveiled its homegrown supersonic jet fighter on Friday, joining an exclusive club of military aviation giants and setting the stage for a 5.2 billion program it hopes will be a top export driver and jobs creator. Once operational, the KF-21 jet is expected to be armed with a range of air-to-air -air and air-to-surface missiles and possibly even air-launched cruise missiles. The twin-engine fighters will come in single- and two-seat versions depending on the missions to which they are tasked. A new era of independent defense has begun and it's a historic milestone in the development of the South Korean aviation industry, President Moon Jae-in said at the rollout of the KF-21, nicknamed Borame or Young Hawk, trained for hunting at the production plant of Korea Aerospace Industries in Sechon, South Gensang, province. The U.S. has blacklisted seven Chinese groups it accuses of building super sub supercomputer to help its military. It is the first move by the Biden administration to make it harder for China to obtain U.S. technology. On Thursday, three companies and four branches of China's National Supercomputing Center were added to the U.S. blacklist. This bars American companies from exporting technology to the groups without proper approval. The U.S. Commerce Department said the groups were involved in building supercomputers used by Chinese military actors and facilitating programs to develop weapons of mass destruction. The sanctioned groups are leading China's supercomputing development and are key players in Beijing's plan for cheap self-sufficiency. U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo said the Biden administration would use the full extent of its authorities to prevent China from leveraging U.S. technologies to support these destabilizing military modernization efforts. 
A top Russian official has warned that Moscow could intervene to help Russian-speaking residents in eastern Ukraine if Ukraine launches an all-out assault on separatists there. Russian-backed separatist rebels and Ukrainian troops have been clashing in the east of the country. Russia has also been building up troops on the border with Ukraine. The official Dmitry Kozak said the Russian forces would intervene to defend its citizens. Everything depends on the scale of the conflagration, he said. He also warned that an escalation could mark the beginning of the end for Ukraine. The United States and Germany have both expressed concern at the increase in tensions. A bird spotted in Arunachal Pradesh at an altitude higher than its recorded perch in adjoining China has become the 1,314th species of the bird family in India. The tree-banded rose finch is a resident of southern China and a vagrant in Bhutan. A team of scientists from Bombay Natural History Society spotted and photographed this rare species of bird in Arunachal Pradesh on February 8. The team comprising BNHS assistant director Giresh Jathar and researchers Atharva Singh and Himadri Sekhar Mondal published the findings in the latest issue of the journal Indian Birds. The new species of bird was found during an intensive survey of finches across the eastern Himalayas as a part of an ongoing study. The survey team members spotted a tree-banded rose finch with a fog of white broad rose finch, a, a species commonly seen in this landscape. Dr. Jatter said that a male and a female tree-banded rose finch were seen at Sela Mountain Pass on the border between Tawang and West Kaming districts of Arnachal Pradesh at an altitude of 3,852 meters above sea level. He said that the altitudinal record of the sighting of the species from India is higher than its previous known altitudinal record from China. This has opened up interesting ecological research on this species, he added. The tree banded rose finch belongs to the family Fringillidae, which are seed eating passerine birds with a distinctively conical bill. The Old Tribunal Students' Union of Manipur called off their agitations on Thursday after the state government agreed to announce the notification for the Autonomous District Council in Hilda districts by May 5 and completion of the election process by June 25. The agreement was reached following a meeting that was conducted on Wednesday night between representatives of the ATSUM and state representatives. The meeting was conducted in the official residence of Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Letpao Haukip, who along with two other tribal ministers represented the government. The Times of India reported, quoting official sources. An overspeeding truck met with an accident, rammed into divider and broke a street light post at 7 miles in Timapur. A heavy vehicle met with an accident at 7 Mile Timapur at around 1 p.m. A traffic personnel present at the site informed that the driver was under influence of alcohol and was driving very speed. The truck then crashed into the divider and broke the street light post. However, according to the truck driver, he said that another car came from the other side and hit the divider while he was trying to avoid hitting the other car. There were three persons in the truck and they were in Timapur from Noklak. The driver and the occupants were taken into custody and are currently in Chumukadama police station. National Highway and Infrastructure Development Corporation reiterated that the damage of government property will have to be compensated by the defaulters. Timapur Municipal Council conducted Clean Air Awareness Program in Timapur. Chairpersons, Count Buras and Sanitation Committee attended the program. With a view to reduce air pollution and to raise public awareness about the hazards of air pollution, the Dimapur Municipal Council conducted an awareness program under National Clean Air Program today at Town Hall in Dimapur. Revo Enforcement Inspector DMC said, despite repeated notifications and orders from the DMC to keep the environment clean, there is still lack of actions. Further to execute the action plan, he appeals the gathering to work together with collective efforts and ideas to keep the environment clean and safe. The Mapur based NGO Living for Environment Chairman Nick Sangla shared the information about various pollution sources and the hazardous effects of waste and air pollution. Meanwhile, Tsutungo Nyamo Dimapur Urban Colony Chairman, Federation President, also said that in order to protect humanity, we need to protect the environment. And that's a wrap from us for English News Roundup. Keep watching Hornbill TV.